Hello everybody and welcome to Jay and Aquarium. Today we're going to talk about pairing your clownfish. One of the most difficult parts of clownfish ownership is acquiring a good pair or trying to make a good pair. Stay tuned. Some pairs, like this pair of Superstorms, just pair up naturally. Just they got along from the get-go. There was never any pairing issues. It just went flawlessly. No damage to fish, no deaths, no nothing. Sometimes it goes absolutely perfect. In the case of this female phantom, it was not perfect. It was not perfect whatsoever. This is the fourth fish that I've put with her to try and pair her up. And thankfully, it looks like we've succeeded. I acquired three female phantoms, much like this one. This female phantom. And this female phantom. I acquired these female phantoms knowing they were all females because I did want to pair them up with my own breeding for a little bit of outcrossing. This female phantom, she paired up great. She's been very, very nice to her little male friend. And one of the keys to pairing up clownfish is make sure you don't have two females to start with. And when you know you have one as a male, try to get a fish that's quite a bit smaller than the female you're trying to pair it with. What this is going to do is allow the female who's already a female to be a bully, allow her to know that she's dominant, and with any luck, she won't pick on the little fella. In the case of this female phantom, it was very, very difficult. As soon as I would put a young male in the tank with this female, she would be violent towards them, very violent. Violent to the point where I would almost immediately remove them from the tank. I did have one male that was with her for about a week and I did notice after a week she had him pretty tattered up so I removed him as well. Fortunately for myself, I have many, many males I can choose from to pair her with. So. On the fourth try, we got this little fella, and they seem to get along very, very good. Time will still tell. It's been about a month now. So a month and he's not tattered up. I think we had success. So I'm gonna show you a couple of methods I use to help the pairing process speed along and be successful. One of the first things I do is I put them in a very, very small area. So this is a 20 gallon cube tank that's suctioned off with holding three different pairs in the same area. What I find is when you give them a confined space, basically speeds the process along. You're forcing the process. So you have to be ready to react if the process is not going well. Because the male won't have very far to get away and escape the female's hair if that's the route she's going. I stress this because if you do not remove the young male and she is aggressive with it, there's not much worse things than an aggressive female clownfish. They will, they will, they, they will break skin on yourself sometimes when you're putting your hands in the tank so imagine what she would be doing to that small male so you have to be ready to react and remove the male uh, before he gets injured if it's not going well so as you can see here this is a 20 gallon long tank and i have it comparted off into six separate compartments and this is part of my process 
this is a young, young pair. You can see one fish has gotten much, much larger than the other. This tells me the pairing process is well underway. Beside them, this is an established pair. These guys have been established for about uh, five months or so, four or five months. They are a solid pair. I actually expect to get eggs anytime. This female's gotten very, very large. They get along great. You see how they interact. They're not worried about each other. She's not pecking at them. He's not uh, having to be submissive around her constantly. They get along really well. And this is what a successful pairing can look like. This here in the compartment next to those fish, this is, they are not paired. We're trying. You can see the different behavior. One fish isn't, the smaller fish isn't as sure. The larger fish is still doing drive-bys and pecking at them and showing dominance and trying to be dominant over the other fish. This is where they're sorting it out. At this stage, there's no way to know if it's gonna be successful or not. Only time will tell, and I will have to be ready to react if the smaller fish is getting picked on too much. Another method that can be used is a basket like this one here, where you can hang inside the tank, you can put the smaller male in the basket, and that way they can acclimate themselves to each other a little bit better before either one can actually physically touch each other. Now, I'm not sold on this idea and I have absolutely no proof that this is a better method, but the theory makes sense. So when you see that pairs cost a lot more than single fish, you can understand why now. Someone's taken the risk and the time to get you a bonded pair that should be bonded for life. At this point, unless one of them passes away, uh, they will be bonded for life and they will defend their territory with their lives. It's a very, very important process and that's why I donate this much of my fish room space to nothing more than making pairs. This way I can offer people bonded pairs that are going to get along and do well in their tank. This while we were talking was a prime example of a pair that's still not completely bonded and still working on it. You could tell they had a little feud a second ago and they'll do this for a couple of months. So thank you for watching. I hope this video helps you a little bit with uh, pairing up your clownfish or maybe just gives you a little more appreciation for people that do it for you so you can just buy a pair that's already paired up. Happy fish keeping and see you next video. Take care.